South Africans and volunteers visit care recipients and bring them much needed food. A fond look back at the first recycling center started in Taiwan by Zuji volunteers. I'm Sean Scanlon. This is Die Headlines. Let's get started. Zuji South African volunteers visited care recipients and gave them food and daily necessities. Most of these recipients live on government subsidies, and as it was the end of the month, many lived in desperate conditions. Here's more. Mud fills the holes in the wall, and the roof leaks when it rains. Suji volunteers visit bringing cornmeal and showering the recipients with love. The wires are exposed and the metal roofing has holes. The house is filled with buckets to catch the rain when it falls unexpectedly. And how about if raining? So, so is they put it here and slip here. They slip here on the side. What do you say this? Balance the roof. They balance the roof. Balance the roof. Because it's going to fall down. Meanwhile, this other household, the volunteers visited 26-year-old Kaya Zedu, who seemed to have cerebral palsy lost both her parents and lives with her grandmother on government support. I like to cry. You like to cry? Why you want to cry? I don't want to cry, but it's near the end of the month, and the house is out of food and out of pampers for her. I pray to the God each day to help me. Today I received pampers and food from Chi-Gi, just like I prayed for. In these parts, there are still people willing to reach out and help one another. Just even the food, the dish that for him is not here. She cooks every day. In the morning, when they eat the, the breakfast, in the during lunch time, and during the evening. Is there any difficulty they're, they're facing? Despite being poor herself, she's giving beyond her means, which helps accumulate blessings for her. Sichuan has experienced the most severe flooding in China. In addition to the damage to E villages, the city and countryside of Chongqing have been hit by heavy rain. With the assistance of a local charity association, Ziji volunteers went to the disaster area to assess the damage. Let's take a look. Our current location is next to the Qi River at the Qijiang district of Chongqing. Qi River is a tributary of the Yanzhe, so after the rainstorms on the 22nd of June and the 1st of July, the water levels rose rapidly, causing flooding to the second floor of the adjacent residential buildings. After the rain was temporarily suspended, the water flow of the Qi River seemed to have eased a bit. Qi Ji volunteers took this advantage to go to the residential area with the Chongqing Charity Federation to assess the disaster damages and find out the list of the residents. The torrential rain was so violent that soon after the official issued a warning, the water levels rose to the second floor and people were too late to pack their belongings. On the 22nd of June, the flood was so fierce that it only took two to three hours to come after the warning was issued. Many residents did not have time to pack anything. This disaster not only hit the city, but also severely affected the countryside of Gansri town, which is located more than 40 kilometers away. Before flooding, you see the area here with stones was a cornfield. While this was a paddy field before, now all have been destroyed. The following were all paddy fields. The home of these villagers was covered by large rocks and landslides washed down from the mountain. He has nothing now. Even for 80 or 90 year old seniors have never seen such severe flooding. It looked very scary. The water came down from three or four meters on the mountain so people could hardly escape. We were not able to take anything. What we wore now are all given by them. 
After assessing the damage, Chiji volunteers are still gathering the number of affected households. It is expected that relevant assistance programs will be put forward within the shortest time so that the survivors can resume their normal life as soon as possible. Heavy rains hit the southern part of China. Chengdu Ziji volunteers visited the affected residents, helping them clean up the mud. Here's more. Taking advantage of the day without rain, Ma Jie hurriedly moved all the matches and bed sheets that were choked by flood waters outside his house to wash. These two bags of washing powder were donated by you. I started to use it today. It's really useful. In Mianlin County, Sichuan, torrential rains caused disasters. Chengdu Chiji volunteers went there to take care of the residents the day after the aid distribution. The rice grains held by this grandma was soaked in water and germinated, so she exposed them under the sun again to see if they could be soaked later. Seeing volunteers coming from afar to visit her, Ma Mingying burst into tears. Volunteers comforted her continuously to ease her mind. We belong to one family. We have come to cheer you up. Although it is very difficult now, we work hard together. Everything should gradually become better and better. You have given us so many things, like rice and sanitizing products. We are so grateful and happy. In addition to caring for the affected residents, volunteers also help them clean up the sludge. The husband of this woman has passed away and all her four children are studying abroad. She doesn't know how to clean up her muddy house. All the rooms in her house are full of sludge and she cleaned them alone. Everyone feels pity for her, so we cleaned it together with her. Otherwise, if she cleans it alone, it would take a few days to finish. With volunteers' help, the sludge in the house was cleared quickly, and her face, which was originally sad, showed a smile eventually. Really, thank you. My home was filled with mud before. It was great to have your help. Thank you very much. Two sisters in Yunlin suffer from mental disorders and live alone. They haven't cleaned their home for a long time. Nearly 30 volunteers were called upon to help the two clean the home, giving the sisters a better living environment. Take a look. They have developmental problems and don't know how to clean. They sleep with rats nearby. The dust on the bed sheets is so thick it's become sand. Their home is tiny and filled with rotting items. There's so much stuff it fills over two trucks. Things go inside the house but not out. Items are piled from floor to ceiling and underneath the bed is full too. Pots, clothes and moldy blankets have all been cleared to the front yard, piled up like a hill. Meanwhile, 55-year-old Miss Xie and her sister look for valuable items while the volunteers clean up. There are nearly 30 volunteers helping the two sisters, with one parent even bringing his child to help. We're happy we could help this family clear out the unwanted items. The inside looks totally different from before. First, cleaning the house, then the volunteers teach the two to do some simple household chores. As their home does not have a toilet, the two sisters often do their business in the alley outside. The next process for the volunteers is to survey their home to see if a bathroom can be installed to improve their hygiene problem. When it comes to the public's impression of Ziji, many people think of the recycling stations that have sprung up all around Taiwan. These centers are now commonplace and have helped institute a system for recycling. Today we visit Taichung, who hosted the first recycling center and some of the volunteers who do this important work. Here's more. This was in 2000s. Isn't this cute? Now I'm old. I used to have black hair, but now it is white. 
The 36-year-old charming young woman in a blink of an eye has changed, and in 30 years, Lin Shu Zhao spent her youthful years working alongside Zhiji doing recycling. This wasteland has been magically transformed by older women, like rain nourishes our good deeds. Like Lin Shu Zhao, who has 30 years of experience as the first batch of Zhiji recycling volunteers originating in Taichung, looking back on images from this era, many feel very sentimental. <laughs> In 1990, Master Zheng Yan was invited to give a speech to Xinmin High School in Taichung. This message proved to be inspirational. When the master went out in the morning, she went through a night market where lots of garbage had been left over littering the ground. During the speech, many audiences applauded. So the master inspired everyone by saying that everyone should come together with their two hands to sort garbage. No one would think that such a simple message touched the broad masses through the television, creating a huge cause and has attracted more than 80,000 people. Religion or charity groups can systematically guide the people to execute recycling. That is to say, after telling people how to do recycling, one is also able to install a recycling system to collect these resources. <laughs> Jin Su Juan is 77 years old this year and walks us to a house in Taichung City on Li Ming Road. After Master Zheng Yan proposed support for recycling, this became the original Ziji Recycling Center. Recycling was done here for the first time, and then under the Banyan tree the second time, and under the Longyan tree the third time. Over the years, because the community has changed recycling points, have evolved into a flash recycling mode. The sound of bottles hitting the ground each morning is now familiar to many people. As volunteers make quick work of labels from bottles and doing classification. All of the packing and loading is overseen by senior volunteers with more than 20 years of experience. I've been doing it for almost 20 years. I get the green and white ones. I have to separate them again, and then they have to be cleaned and flattened. Before 7 o'clock in the morning, prior to going to work, everyone made a quick decision to do flash recycling. About 10 years ago, there was a little interest in recycling, so the G's total recycling accounted for about 30 percent of Taiwan's total. Though by 2019, this figure fell to just 3 percent, as more and more people are environmentally aware. We have played a leading role, and though the proportion of our recycling is getting smaller and smaller, but it doesn't mean that the entire recycling amount is decreasing. Just our proportion of recycling is decreasing, indicating more people are involved in recycling, which is the best way to do this work. According to statistics, in 2019, there are 89,585 Ziji recycling volunteers who have received certification in Taiwan. Regarding Ziji's recycling operations, we basically give young people the opportunity to participate. But in fact, the most important participants, or those who do the most, are retired people and the elderly. This gives them something to do later in life. After being busy with recycling all day, Jin Su Juan returned home. She was retired and says that recycling is not just an activity but also a concept. She hopes that one day she can pass on this idea to her children. I really hope that my daughter will embrace recycling and my son can also pass these concepts along. I hope we can all do recycling together and help society and benefit all living beings. 30 years of recycling and environmental protection is not coming to an end. Instead, volunteers continue to walk this world silently, turning hardship into nutrients for the future, cultivating Taiwan's proud achievements in recycling. The owner of an old fabric store in Shinju has decided to close up shop and donate all the fabric to Ziji Shinju Liaison Office. When volunteers came to transport the fabric, all his family members came to witness the occasion giving these fabrics a fond send-off. Here's more. This old fabric store in Xinju is the life of 88-year-old Chen Shanzhu. He has managed this store for over 50 years, and on this day, it's closing. 
For my father, this is the best thing, as it's an official end to the store. Otherwise, he's just living with fabric his whole life. Even if he has a day off, he still visits the shop. I'd go to the countryside to sell fabric and ride my bicycle with two bundles of fabric, often taller than myself. That's how I'd go down to the country to sell with my bicycle. Honestly, I'd sell out all the fabric, but it wasn't enough for living. In the past, my allowance for the day of selling was 50 cents, which was enough for one pastry. I drink water from the side of the road, and that was my one meal. The owner has been selling fabric with his father since he was 12 and made it through the difficult times by scrimping and saving. Some people know him as Professor Fabric. Professor Fabric is not a title he gave himself, but it's something everyone refers to him out of respect. It's also a term that Taiwan's knitting industry coined for him. Professor Fabric has a trick. He can accurately measure yards of fabric with just his hands and eyes. As the store is closing, he's donating all the fabric left in the store to Tsuji. Giving these fabrics to Chi Chi puts us at ease because we know the organization is really doing charitable deeds. I have 100 things to say, but I'll sum it up in one phrase. Thank you. And that's all I wish to express, so I don't want to take up any more of your time. Thank you so much. This owner has such great love. He's donating the fabric from the store to us, for us to use as we see fit. Isn't that just the greatest love there is? Having worked with fabric for 75 years, Chen Sanju is forming a good affinity over the long haul by donating his fabric to Tsuji. The Shangri-La Hotel Group sponsored care packages for solitary seniors containing rice, cooking oil, Jingsa food products, and Jingsa aphorisms. Zhiji volunteers and hotel staff later delivered the care packages in person. Take a look. In a rainy day, Zhiji volunteers and trained hotel staff pay home visit to solitary seniors together. Volunteers bring care packages, which contain rice, cooking oil, Jinshi food products and Jinshi aphorisms for solitary seniors to care for their physical and spiritual health. Every single item is very useful to me. I can eat rice every meal and for the cornflakes, I can cook for breakfast in the morning. This is Jingsa aphorism, nothing is impossible with confidence, perseverance and courage. Chiji volunteers have been caring for the solitary seniors for a long time. Employees of a chain hotel join the ranks of volunteer to light up the forgotten corners of society. We have visited four grandmas. Everyone is very enthusiastic and happy for our visit. I hope there will be more chances in the future to visit different people and come across different situations in society. Every voluntary event is a chance to learn. Chiji volunteer teaches the chain hotel staff the appropriate manner of volunteering. When facing a disadvantaged group, your height should not be higher than them. If he is at this level, then you have to squat down. I have learned some knowledge from Tsuji, like everyone is in an equal position. I think it is very interesting and at the same time, I also knew some of Tsuji's concepts. I learned to say good words, like a thank you and grateful for you, so we can speak more good words in future. The 188 care packages were given to the solitary seniors, bringing food and happiness to them. Zhiji volunteers all over the world have actively promoted vegetarianism, like the principal of a kindergarten in Fujian, and in Guangdong volunteers teach cooking lessons. Here's more. This mushroom in our vegetarian diet can give our body a lot of nutrition and the ability to fight off sickness. To promote vegetarianism, Dongguan and Zhiji volunteers not only cook for the people, but also teach everyone how to cook. Being a vegetarian is indeed beneficial to human health. It also improves our environment. I wanted to share some aspects of my life as a vegetarian with everyone. I wanted to share with everyone that being a vegetarian is like a kind of spiritual practice and can lead to a kind of change. During mealtime, they hope to win over the public's taste buds through veggie dishes prepared by the volunteers. Volunteers hope that the public can truly understand the meaning of vegetarianism. 
Through vegetarianism, you can make yourself healthier. Planet will also be better, and you can also increase your compassion. Eating vegetarian food can make your body healthier and reduce disease and mental stress. And secondly, it makes a great contribution to the environment and the whole world. The vegetarian diet has direct benefit when it comes to energy savings and carbon reduction. This kindergarten in Chenzhou has always served vegetarian food since its establishment, and all the little children are strong and healthy. In the beginning, it was very difficult to serve only vegetarian food. Some parents, when they heard about our vegetarian food, they felt that it was not nutritious. But after the fourth year, slowly the number of students began to increase. Now many come because our kindergarten only serves vegetarian food. Because I myself am a vegetarian, and my children now like to eat vegetarian food. He said that the vegetarian food cooked by the teacher is delicious. With the persistence of this principle and support of parents, these children can now benefit from a vegetarian diet, grow up just as healthy as those who eat meat. Furthermore, the seeds of compassion have been implanted in their hearts and will long grow into the future. After the epidemic subsided in Taiwan, Ziji volunteers went to Linko and Damsui to care for elders, leading them to exercise to prevent the onset of dementia. Let's take a look. This is the first long-term care class for elders. Every student moves happily. Today we talked and laughed, making me feel like I was back in my childhood. I've never heard that a community of elderly people who has been cared for by groups, but Zhiji volunteers treat us as treasure with love and kindness. For the first time, Danshui Ziji volunteers ran a long-term care course to prevent elders from dementia and disability. Another group of volunteers prepared the nutritional meal for the elderly. Today we prepared about 100 lunch boxes because our long-term care program is for seniors. Their teeth are not so good. So when we cook, we considered what is easier for seniors to chew. Volunteers comply the concept of vegetarianism into a song and sing it to pass the meaning to the seniors in the nursing home. Rich food is the safest to eat, vegetables and fruits, right? Let's go meatless, so that everyone in the world is healthy. For 82-year-old Xu Zhuran, singing and dancing on the stage is easy. Her body is tough and can be called a role model of a vegetarianism. I've been a vegetarian for over 30 years. I've been healthy since I started being vegetarian. I am a meat eater, but now I've learned the concept of vegetarianism and I want to adopt that eating habit. Ziji gives elderly people a sense of health and warm companionship. Although the meeting is short, the joy can last long. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.